I recently read a comment that INFJs are more likely to attract narcissistic abuse than any other personality type and I consistently test as INFJ, big shocker, I know. And I know many of you are too. So I thought that was interesting, so I thought I would talk about it. Now, as with everything we've been talking about this year, there is a lot of overlap among neurodivergence, specifically autism, CPTSD, and INFJ. So the water is muddy and it's difficult to differentiate. If you're not familiar with MBTI, the Myers-Briggs type indicator is one test among many for defining personality based on four major categories of two poles each, and those are extroversion versus introversion, sensing versus intuiting, thinking versus feeling, and judging versus perceiving. And four times four is 16, so there are 16 distinct personality types, each represented by an acronym of four letters, one from each of those categories. And if you haven't done so already, you can go ahead and take that test for free online to find out your personality type. And the INFJ, I believe, is apparently, statistically, the rarest personality type out of all 16 Myers-Briggs personality types, representing, I think, around 2% of the world's population. So based on those four categories, INFJ stands for introverted, intuitive, the N stands for intuitive to distinguish it from introverted feeling and judging. And that's the problem. Those first three, introverted, intuitive, and feeling, all kind of go together. That kind of sounds like empath cocktail to me, and pretty much every video on this channel explains why narcissists abuse empaths. That judgment though, one of these things is not like the others. Where did that come from? That doesn't seem to really flow with the whole sensitive, compassionate, healer archetype. And I think that is what makes the INFJ the rarest personality type. INFJs are unicorns. They are initially described as mysterious because other people do not understand them. So that right there is the first problem. Sometimes, but not always, workplace bullying is just fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown, you are targeted simply because you are different. And by different, I don't mean some kind of lifestyle choice like vegetarianism or you're a man who paints his fingernails. You are not different because you have tattoos or body piercings or you dye your hair a funny color or you do yoga, or you drink water. All of that is just the superficial trappings of an earthly, mundane, material, physical existence. Anyone can pull that off. Difference is not really anything that you say or do, and it certainly is not what you look like. Difference is more an energetic state of being. It's an approach to the world. It's how you view life, yourself, and others that manifests in your presentation and your affect. For me, and I've stated this before, but it bears repeating, being truly unique means that you care more about your own soul's salvation than you care about the opinions of other people. You care more about what you think of you than what other people think of you. You don't do groupthink, herd mentality, or hive mind. You don't go along to get along. You do you, and that is probably because you are also intuitive, which we'll talk about in a minute. If you are still connected to source, God, goddess, spirit, universe, whatever you wanna call it, you are also connected to your higher self, otherwise known as your soul, and your soul knows everything. Your soul knows what you are supposed to be doing and what you're not supposed to be doing. And you are different because you are listening. You're not listening to other people, you're listening to God. Because which is more painful? to be bullied by other people just because you're different or suffer separation from the divine and also from yourself. In other words, being different means that you have integrity and integrity is definitely a quality that will get you bullied in the workplace. Why do people have fear of the unknown? It's tribal, that's all it is. This is caveman, cro Neanderthal thinking, it's primitive. Any aberration from the norm is a distraction that's going to attract the attention of predators to the entire tribe. You're gonna get us all into trouble. It's an outdated mentality that originated with the 
early societies of the disastrous agricultural revolution that depended very heavily on very heavily connected dependents, everyone functioning within very rigid social strictures. You had to know your place and don't you dare step out of line. Although society has evolved considerably in the ensuing thousands of years, especially I would say in the past 200 years or so, the human brain really hasn't. Yes, we've come a long way toward inclusion of protected classes, neurodivergence, and special needs. We don't lock children born with Down syndrome in the attic until they die anymore, but on an interpersonal level, that phobia is primordial. Same cast of characters, different costume changes. Sure, we have antibiotics and better hygiene, but unfortunately, most of the people on the planet are still living in caves in more ways than one. Also, it is human nature to be unable to interact with the other in a state of equality. That's not psychology, that's philosophy. Most people do not know how to engage with someone who is different from them without one of two responses, either domination or subordination. Workplace bullies are having a fear response and it's usually fight or fawn. Now, because most workplace bullies are antagonistic and anxious, they're usually in fight mode. They're having a fear response. They are afraid of you because you are different and people fear what they can't understand. But if someone is fawning all over you with a lot of ass kissing that just feels icky, that person is afraid of you too. I've also said this before, but I'll say it again. Different is not better or worse. Different is just different. When I was an English teacher, I used to teach collocations, which are colloquial patterns of always using certain words together with other words, usually verbs or adjectives together with prepositions, like it depends on, I am married to, and the collocation for different in the American vernacular is different from. I believe in Australia it's different too. And because I am the Nazi English teacher, it drives me crazy that everyone gets that wrong. You may have noticed that Americans always say different than. Every time I hear that, it makes my toes curl. Than is a preposition for a comparison. Better than worse than. Again, different is not a comparison. Different really is just different. But difference will always be misinterpreted as a comparison by paranoid, insecure, externally focused people who live entirely in a world of comparisons. The other problem with being different in the workplace is that any difference will also always be misinterpreted as superiority and judgment. I've also said this before, but it also bears repeating. It is vital to never underestimate these people's levels of self-absorbed egocentrism. You are not actually an individual human being with your own identity, boundaries, and rights, your own history and experiences, or your own thoughts, feelings, or ideas. You are just an extension of them. You are an accessory, you're a handbag. Everything about you is a direct commentary on them. It's just all about them. If there's anything about you, anything at all, that is different from these people in any way at all whatsoever, they really believe that is something you do on purpose to show them up. They think that you want to look down on them and power trip off of a superiority complex because that's what they do. It's a projection. They're competitive. Yes, they cray, but that's how these people think. Long story short, they feel judged by you, which we'll also talk about in a minute. If you are different by default in the workplace, I guarantee you at some point you will be gaslit as, quote, not a team player. Raise your hand if you've heard that one. Let me go ahead and translate that one for you. Team player means not different. That's all it means. Don't be different from us because we're too stupid to understand you. These people do not have the self-awareness to be able to even understand themselves. How do you think that they're going to understand you? 
Now the I in INFJ stands for introverted and introverts are very likely to be bullied, especially if they are attractive. And I have a couple of videos on that. But introverts are not necessarily narcissist magnets. I think narcissists are attracted to both extroverts and introverts. If you are extroverted, you shine. And narcissists are empty people with ooh shiny syndrome and they are very easily distracted by pretty shiny things like little kids in a toy store. They gravitate toward the life of the party because they are hoping that some of that shine will rub off on them. But don't you dare outshine them. If you do that, you're gonna hear about it. They literally fantasize about parading their arm candy in public in order to source external validation. They're not there for the charitable event or the theatrical performance or the nice dinner out or the actual substance of the evening. It's just more empty supply sourcing. Everybody look at us, aren't we fine? Because they can't go within, they can't source anything that they need internally by co-creating together with the universe. So they have to take everything that they want from other people by force. They're parasitic, they're users. If you are introverted, introverts are problematic for narcissists. Because introverts spend a lot of time alone, they tend to cultivate very rich, full internal lives. And that just smells like high supply. So bullies have to violate your boundaries and harass you in order to extract it from you by force. But introversion in and of itself is low supply because introverts don't focus on other people. They focus on themselves and narcissists demand nothing less than your undivided attention at all times. How dare you focus on anything other than them at all times. Also, introverts tend to have the capacity to cultivate an internal sense of peace and calm and to just be content with themselves and by themselves, which is something that narcissists can never do because they're so addicted to supply from other people. So there's some pathological jealousy at play here. Also, introverts don't just like to be alone. They need to be alone. That's how they recharge the batteries and restore balance. But anytime you give off an energy of wanting to be left alone, you're going to attract sadists who are going to try to disturb your peace because they enjoy hurting people. This is going to generate some attention-seeking behaviors like passive-aggressive insults or ridicule or harassment because people who are emotionally dysregulated really resent your inner peace and they will go out of their way to try to sabotage it. It's like sticking a stick inside an anthill or throwing a pebble into the surface of still water just to see what happens. It's a distraction that is a deliberate attempt to create confusion so that you never get too close to the mask. In other words, the intent is to block your intuition, which we'll also talk about in a minute. In the workplace, introverts will always be misinterpreted as unfriendly and again, snotty. Workplace bullies are by definition insecure people. And if you don't engage with them, they misinterpret that as a wholesale rejection of self. They think you don't like them and they would be right. You don't like them. I know you don't. I don't like them either. This is going to generate a lot of gaslighting that takes the form of sweeping generalizations like you don't like people, you don't like anyone, you're a misanthrope. This is some kind of cognitive dissonance on their part, a self-protective defense mechanism to make themselves feel better that it's not personal. It actually is personal. You may not actually be a natural introvert. You may have had introversion forced on you by shitty people. I'm more than happy to talk for hours with other spiritual people who are high vibrational and evolved. It's like people are fine. I like all kinds of people. I just don't like you. So the N in INFJ again stands for intuitive to distinguish it from introverted and pretty much every video on this channel substantiates my long-standing theory that workplace bullying is the abuse of empaths by narcissists. By empath, I mean just some kind of general umbrella term for someone 
with some kind of sixth sense, psychic medium, intuitive, sensitive, whatever you want to call it. And again, empathy is not this warm fuzzy that everyone makes it out to be. An empath is not necessarily a nice person. There are plenty of intuitive people who are also narcissistic. Take it from me, I was one. Some people are just born with the gift, but in most people, empathy is a muscle that you were forced to develop in order to protect yourself. Victims of abuse have to learn how to read, track, and scan the abuser remotely in order to always be one step ahead of them, in order to protect themselves. You had to learn how to size people up, and that's what intuition is. Now, technically, Intuition is nothing special. The sixth sense is our divine birthright as spiritual beings. Everybody's psychic. We all have the ability to communicate telepathically. It's just that most of us get our intuition beaten out of us as children with a lot of ridicule and gaslighting. Kids say the darndest things. And that public vilification of intuitive people continues into adulthood. Intuitive people have always been demonized and crucified, sometimes literally, throughout history, does the term witch hunt mean anything to you? People think that intuitive people have access to some sort of secret hidden knowledge when the truth is everyone could develop their intuition if they wanted to. So again, there's the pathological jealousy component. Also, intuitive people are very threatening to the status quo, namely narcissistic power structures that want to retain their tenuous, fragile death grip on power in society. In order to do that, they have to abuse you into codependency and delude you with the false belief that you need them, when in reality it's the other way around. You don't need them. They need you for supply. Your narcissistic doctor has to keep you sick in order to keep your checks coming. If the truth is really inside of you the whole time, that weakens the power of narcissists who want to be the false gods in your universe and tell you who you are, what to think, and how to feel. And intuitive people are also very threatening to people who have something to hide. If you are intuitive, you may not actually have embraced your gift, but you know you are intuitive because your intuition bothers everyone. By now, you may have been abused so much for being intuitive that you have learned to people please and walk on eggshells. God forbid you should ever do or say anything that would ever offend anyone. I know that you do your best to hide your intuition. You don't do anything. You don't say anything. You perfect your poker face. You may even act dumb. It doesn't matter. They know, you know. They know that you know damn well that the emperor has no clothes and they are terrified of exposure. That paranoia may generate a lot of violent oppositionality. They're trying to shut you up and shut you down. They want to make sure that you are silenced before you even have a chance to call them out when you probably have no intention of doing so anyway. They may call you things like immature, rude, disrespectful, and accuse you of having issues with authority without any substantive evidence to justify their false accusations. Let me go ahead and translate all of that for you. All that means is that you see right through them and they know it. You ain't buying what they're selling. You know they're full of shit and they're people with no real leadership skills who never should have been placed in positions of power in the first place and they know that too. Normal people who are committed to a journey of personal growth and self-development don't really mind being read. You can call me out. I'll probably agree with you. I've made a lot of mistakes and I'm not proud of them, but I'm not crippled by toxic shame because I'm not wallowing in all-consuming self-loathing. The earth plane is a school and I signed up for the experience. I'm here to learn. Everything is learning. It's all just constant change. If I confront something about myself that I don't like, I can cringe, but then I can use that information as a challenge to be overcome and an opportunity to course correct. It's kind of like a creative project for me. 
If you so much as told the people that you work with that the part in their hair was not straight, they would probably try to get you fired for that. They go on the war path, and that is their toxic shame that is triggered by their narcissistic rage. Finally, intuitive people can behave very strangely, which attracts a lot of ridicule. More than any other demographic in society, intuitive people get gaslit as crazy. I really believe that most of the so-called crazy people in this world are actually sensitives, who simply couldn't handle their overexposure and vulnerability to the spirit world, a lot like the schizophrenic in the movie The Sixth Sense who commits homicide and suicide. Empaths tend to react to things that other people just don't pick up on. You may be reacting more to the underlying intent than to the actual words or the actions. Nobody sees what provoked your reaction. They see only your reaction. And this can lead other people to believe that you are exaggerating making mountains out of molehills or worst case scenario, just making things up. Other people do not understand your motivation for behaving the way that you do because there doesn't appear to be any tangible justification for it. And we are all living in a society that is out of balance and that prioritizes left brain scientific thinking and dismisses outright any information that cannot be quantified by the traditional five senses. Also, intuitive people tend to trust themselves more than they trust other people. You trust your inner knowing and you care more about how you feel than you care about fitting in or acceptance from others. And this can result in an idiosyncratic or eccentric personality that is, again, different. And being different always attracts bullying. So the F in INFJ stands for feeling, and I've also stated before that targets of workplace bullying may be more emotional than most, and that is another quality that gets you targeted. Emotion in astrology is the water signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, as well as your moon. So if you have your moon actually in a water sign and or prominently aspected, for example, a moon-Jupiter conjunction like me, you're an emotional person, and there's nothing wrong with that. You say that like that's a bad thing. Only in English is the word emotional considered a bad word. In Spanish, it just means nice. Like, what do you think of her? Emocionada. She's nice. But this is the era of fuck your feelings. We are living in the emotional dark ages, and our emotional literacy is at an all-time low. At the same time, we are also living on an overcrowded, overpopulated planet with more cumulative collective trauma than ever before, and our need for healing is at an all-time high. But the healing modalities we currently have at our disposal remain exceedingly primitive. If traditional talk therapy and organized religion ever actually helped anyone, this world would be a completely different place. If people don't heal, it's because they don't know how to. One of the reasons that workplace bullies bully is that they have their own trauma. Hurt people hurt people. The contemporary workplace is the critical care unit of psychiatric diseases. If their mental illnesses were physical, it would look like a mash unit with hacked off limbs, blood and guts, and pus dripping sores flying around all over the place. These people are sick, gravely ill. And because they have absolutely no emotional intelligence, they have no idea how to heal. Because they don't even know that they're sick in the first place. They think they're normal. One of the reasons you are bullied is that you are more emotionally intelligent than they are. By emotionally intelligent, I mean emotionally expansive. You extend yourself the grace to feel your feelings, all of your feelings, because at some point along the way, you acquired the tools to process them. Workplace bullies are pretty much two note wonders. You may have noticed that their emotional range basically consists of pathological jealousy and rage. And that's pretty much it. 
There's not a lot of depth to these people. If you are an emotionally literate person in the workplace, you kind of look like an emotional football field. You're the emotional expert. You also look like their personal trash can, universal dump master. It is basically pro bono emotional prostitution. You are effectively everyone's bitch. If people target you with their crap, that's because they know you will take it on. What that does is it externalizes their own toxicity so they don't have to deal with it. They're emotional cowards. They're offloading. They're basically projectile vomiting all of their own unhealed, unprocessed pain and trauma and wiping it all over you and passively asking you to process it for them because they know that you can. Empathy basically means that you have shitty spiritual boundaries. An empath is a little sponge who just blithely absorbs the energy around her without any conscious awareness of what is really going on. Unfortunately for those of us who chose to incarnate as empaths, part of our purpose is to take on some of that toxicity and process it for other people because we are stronger than they are. We have the power to transmute energy. That is the empath's superpower. And that is not just because it sucks for us, but because as we absorb negative energy and then release it back into the light, the universe can gradually be filled with more light, which is better for everybody. You may be an emotional person because you yourself have your own trauma, which I discussed in the CPTSD video. As much as I hate the you're too sensitive gaslighting, when you have unhealed trauma, you actually are too sensitive. You yourself may be or may have been at some point in your life emotionally dysregulated, unstable, or even volatile. And this makes you reactive. When you have trauma, you have triggers. And if people are trying to trigger you, that's because they know they can trigger you. They're sadists. They enjoy hurting people. They're trying to get a rise out of you because they know that they can. And as much as you perfect your poker face and do your best not to show your emotions, they still know they got you. Now the J in INFJ stands for judging and here's where it gets tricky. Judgment in astrology is Libra and unevolved Libra can be one judgmental dickhead. Don't come for me, I'm a Libra rising. I know how we are, it's giving cerebral narcissists. Workplace bullies live in terror of being judged and that is their insecurity. Narcissists are at the core insecure people and when it comes to workplace bullying, insecurity is the name of the game. These people care way too much what other people think of them. You may have endured false accusations from people who assumed that you were judging them when you probably weren't thinking about them at all. I have been indirectly accused several times of judging people when I was not even aware of their presence in the room. It's like, bruh, I don't even know you, let alone judge you. Workplace bullies think that you are judging them and they may be right. You may be judging them, but not for the things that they think. Workplace bullies think that you are judging them for the way they look for their height, for their weight, for their clothes, for their skin, for their teeth, for their level of education, their knowledge, their intellect, for their social class, or how much money their parents had, or how big their house is, or what kind of car they drive, or for the spinach in their teeth, or for how long they spent in the bathroom, or for their pimples or cold sores, or all the superficial bullshit that you could care less about. You may, however, be judging them for the quality of their characters. One of the reasons that I like astrology so much is that it is all-inclusive without judgment. Every astrological element has both light and shadow, evolved and unevolved, and it all comes together to create the collective human experience. Every human being has all 12 signs and all 10 planets in his or her chart. So before you point the finger, take a look at yourself. For example, Scorpio has a bad reputation as being dark, but you can't send a cancer into a crime scene. Someone has to clean up the dead bodies. 
Scorpio can go there because we need people who can go there. And as I stated, unevolved Libra can get awfully judgy. But society needs judges, just like we need prisons. We need people who can put their foot down and draw a line in the sand between right and wrong and say, yeah, no. A different personality type, like for example, the INFP may take a softer approach to workplace bullies. Like, well, they're sick, they're in pain, hurt people hurt people, try to have compassion, they just need a big hug. Just send them love and light. The INFPs may be more likely to keep forgiving and giving second chances. To the INFJs, all of that looks like cringe, doormatty, codependent enabling. INFJs are nicknamed the counselor or the advocate, and they are often drawn to the legal profession because of that judgment. They are social justice warriors who have the courage to speak truth to power and to say, actually, this is not okay. Alicia Keys is saying, if you treat me fairly, I'll give you all my goods. I am in general a soft feminine woman who probably looks like an easy mark, physically at least. I have a deep wellspring of empathy, compassion, and beautiful high vibrational healing energy I am more than happy to share with like-minded people who treat me in kind. It does not mean that I exist to be drained of my life force upon the altar of your ego. I do not exist in service to your supply while you have absolutely nothing to offer me in return. And it doesn't mean that I do not have boundaries, rights, or rules of engagement. With some of the mean girls who bullied me, I thought to myself, if they had just been able to put down the jealousy stick, they could have found in me a good and loyal friend. But they didn't ask nicely. You're going to come correct, or you don't come at all. If you want to step to me with any bullshit, fuck around and find out. I don't know about you, but I extend as much compassion to the people who bullied me as they extended to me. When people bully me, do I judge them? What do you think? Fuck yeah, I judge them. In fact, I judge them so severely, I don't consider them human beings at all. If you're going to treat me as though I am not a human being, well, then you're not a human being to me. Fair enough. If I'm not supposed to think I'm better, then why should I be held to a higher standard than my bullies? You finally showed your true colors. Thank you for showing me what you really are. That's very good, useful information. Now, thank you, drive through. You want fries with that? Keep it moving. Move on down the road because you and me, we're done. Bye, bitch. Bye, Felicia. That's the J in INFJ. INFJs can be, let's say, 75% nice, which can look like passive aggressiveness, which, let's be fair, we've all had to be passive aggressive just to survive. We've all had to passively tolerate months and years of other people's fuckery just because we want to earn a living. We all turn a blind eye and sweep a lot under the rug. This can look like you are forgiving them when you totally aren't. All bullies test boundaries because they want to see how much they can get away with. And if you keep letting them get away with it, they think that you will always be like that. In a sense, this is how they are trying to get unconditional love. It's like a three-year-old toddler who acts out and throws temper tantrums and breaks the rules. He's trying to see how much he can get away with. And that's how children establish a sense of safety because they learn that despite their behavior, they are still loved. Workplace bullying is actually a pathetic cry for help. They really do need a big hug. Of course, once you are an adult, if you still don't know what unconditional love feels like, you need to get it from God. But workplace bullies are disconnected from the creator and 100% externally focused. So they're trying to get everything from other people. 
They're shopping for milk in the liquor store. I don't know about you, but I'm not Jesus Christ. If you need unconditional love or forgiveness, you can read the Bible or you can go to church, but whatever you do, you don't come to me about it. Now, as an INFJ, when you finally call out your bullies, stand up to them and assert your boundaries, they will call you a crazy bitch and you will be on their shit list for the rest of their lives. But what they will never understand is that that was the last straw. You had your back up against the wall. They pushed you too far and you have to be pushed to the breaking point to bring out the J in INFJ. In a sense, workplace bullies bad behavior is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy on their part that reaffirms their own false limiting belief systems. They fully expect you to judge them. So they behave in a way that forces you to judge them. Even if you do your best to hide your thoughts and feelings, they know that you don't exactly have a good opinion of them. And the reason that they cannot be receptive to the feedback is that they don't respect you. They may not respect you because of your protected class. They don't like women or black people or gays or people who wear hijab, whatever. Or it could just be that you are younger, newer, or lower ranked than they are, sometimes even physically smaller. If someone that they actually did respect, for example, a large, older white man in a very high position of power and authority, were to give them the same constructive criticism about their behavior, they might actually have enough humility to take it into consideration. But they can't hear it from you. I want to add that all of these qualities, the difference, the introversion, the intuition, the judging, even the feeling, are mirroring. There's something called the empathic mirror effect. A major reason you get bullied in the workplace is that by your energy and presence alone, you are showing other people themselves. When you are different from other people, you challenge them to start questioning why they are the way they are. When you are introverted, you create a space of stillness and silence that drives people even more insane than they already are because it leaves them alone with themselves and their own trauma. When you absorb other people's negative energy and then reflect it back to them, you are showing them their ugliness. And if you can see right through people and even go so far as to judge them, they know that you're probably right. Long story short, INFJs force sick, insecure people to look at themselves. And that is what they hate. A caveat for the INFJ personality type is similar to a section in my essay on workplace bullying that I called Don't Believe Your Own Hype. When I was researching INFJ, it was just all about how INFJs are so amazing because they're so special and unique and rare and mysterious and no one will ever be able to understand them and everyone is afraid of them and they intimidate everybody. It's an elite class of people who are so powerful, like the super empath. It's like new age YouTubers who claim that they are royal Palladian star seeds from the lost continent of Atlantis. Girl, uh, I'm sorry, I just had to peel my eyeballs off the back of my cranium. I mean, I'm woo woo, but even I am not that woo woo. So I had to click off all of that before I threw up. Part of the function of abuse is to ping your ego. It is to trigger you into a low level, low vibrational, egoic state of fear where everything negative resides. And that includes our own narcissistic qualities like, for example, grandiosity. That is the ego of victim consciousness. I know how it is. I used to feel like every time I walked inside the workplace, the whole place was rolling out the red carpet for me. I felt like a celebrity who was being harassed by the paparazzi. And I've said before that 
even though I actually have a very homely self-concept, when you attract that much unwanted negative attention for that long, it's very tempting to start believing that there is something very special about you. There is and there isn't. I remember an interview I heard about a dozen years ago with Bruce Springsteen, the boss, and he said something like, you are a child of God, but you are also just like everybody else. And you have to hold those two conflicting self-concepts simultaneously. We see the ego of victim consciousness in protected classes that have been historically persecuted. And now it's just all about how they are God's chosen people. Ain't no motherfucking chosen people, people. Why do you have to be kings and queens? Who in their right mind would want to be descended from lazy, inbred, genocidal mass murderers who did nothing but pose for tacky portraits and furs and jewelry? What's wrong with being a gardener or a construction worker? At least they create things. Anytime you start talking about any kind of division, if you want to talk about governments or borders or leaders or cabbages and kings, you're already living in a fallen world. Those are human constructs. Spirit doesn't do hierarchy, and it certainly doesn't do division. The universe is unity consciousness, one source consciousness. You are not abused because you are some kind of earth angel for fuck's sake. You are abused because your abusers have identified in you some kind of vulnerability that they can exploit for their own advantage. So as for the claim that INFJs attract more narcissistic abuse than any other personality type, I'm gonna go ahead and call bullshit on that one. That's just their own narcissistic grandiosity talking. Narcissists don't like special people. They like vulnerable people. I hope that helps. Take care.